Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. This week's video is going to be a little different than usual in that I'll be building up a model of a low bypass turbofan engine. The guys over at Engine DIY were kind enough to send me a unit of their WS15 engine, which is the kit I'll be building in today's video. I'll be reviewing the end result and providing my opinions on it, so stay tuned for that. Enjoy! Let's begin by having a brief look at the box contents, as well as how the kit came packaged. You're immediately greeted by the central drive shaft, which is made of metal, followed by some very nice foam padding that encompasses the rest of the kit. The parts themselves are pretty interesting. At first glance, I thought they might have been injection molded plastic like a normal model kit. However, I think they might actually be 3D printed resin. Consulting the manufacturer's website, the material is stated as being resin plastic, so I'm thinking this may be the case. The layer lines formed through the 3D printing process are pretty visible on some of the parts. Whilst this does detract somewhat from the appearance of the parts when viewing close up, the overall appearance isn't bad whatsoever and I feel that these components will be perfectly suitable when viewing from a normal distance. The instructions for this kit are presented in a pretty novel way. Provided in the box is a small strip of paper featuring two QR codes that lead to a virtual instruction booklet along with a guide video that walks you through the assembly process in a little extra detail. The instructions are given online in multiple different languages with CAD imagery alongside the text in order to give a bit of extra guidance. This was a great idea overall, though the intermittent ads on the hosting website were a bit of a pain and I reckon for the price you're paying for this kit they shouldn't really be there at all. Right, let's get into the assembly. This started with the construction of the low pressure compressor blades, which were inserted into a keyed shaft that would provide a motorised rotation later on. The individual stages were slightly tricky to assemble and required a bit of force to get into place, though I managed to get them all in place eventually. These components were numbered in order to ensure that they would be installed in the correct order. Now it was time for the low pressure compressor housing, which would contain the multiple different stages assembled in the previous step. This component also features a planetary gear system that would provide a reduced RPM to the following high pressure compressor assembly. The components involved with this step went together pretty nicely with no issues up to this point. A triplet of M2.5 bolts were used to secure the planetary gear system in place, tightened using an allen key. Now it was time to insert the low pressure compressor into its housing. I'm not going to lie, this was a pretty tricky step and required quite a lot of fiddling. I'm not sure if this was down to user error, however I had to trim down one of the tabs that prohibited the movement of the cutaway fan modules in order to prevent it from blocking the fan that actually had to rotate. Aside from this, the module did work in the end and its rotation was pretty smooth. Just be aware of these highlighted tabs if you do come to build one yourself. The outermost static fan assembly was then bolted onto the end of the low pressure compressor using a series of M2.5 bolts. These would be used throughout the project in order to secure the different modules together. Assembly of the high pressure compressor stages could now be commenced. The keyed stages that this featured were again pretty tricky to slide down the central shaft, however they went down in the end with little to no unwanted play, so this was good to see. The different components at this point were again numbered in order to aid the assembly process. It was pretty satisfying seeing this section build up gradually and at this point I was having quite a bit of fun with it. I then installed the high pressure compressor housing. It wasn't immediately clear how this part was meant to be applied, however it soon became obvious that it could bend slightly to be clipped on from the side. This is one of the advantages of working with semi-flexible materials. With this done, the LP and HB modules could be joined together with a series of bolts, comprising the initial section of the engine. This would be immediately continued with the assembly of the combustion chamber, where the aviation fuel will be mixed with the now compressed air. This module went together really easily and I have no complaints about it. 
No bolts were required for its assembly. Now for the low pressure turbine. This stage, as the name suggests, is responsible for the majority of the engine's thrust. The rapidly expanding fuel-air mixture is forced through these blades, causing them to rapidly rotate. This, in turn, is used to drive the compressors, along with the main rotor at the front of the engine, which sucks air both into the compressors as well as the bypassed sheath flow around the outside. The parts involved with this assembly went together pretty well, with no serious complications. The turbine housing could then be installed in similar fashion to the previous stage casings. The turbine assembly along with the combustion chamber were then both bolted onto the back of the high pressure compressor, completing the majority of the engine's assembly. The next component to be installed was the driving motor that would demonstrate the motion of the different interior modules. This was connected to the central drive shaft using a series of grub screws, secured nice and tight with an allen key. The motor itself will be hidden away within the exhaust nozzle. The exhaust nozzle itself, along with the exhaust fairing, could then be installed pretty easily. The nozzle featured a clip-on mechanism that didn't require the use of bolts, which was a nice touch. One of the final steps was to install the outermost shroud that would contain the engine's sheath flow. This was a very satisfying component to put on. The electronics could then be connected up to a battery contained in the base and the engine was complete. Before we take a look at the final product, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all of my loyal MW channel members. Your support is absolutely invaluable and I can't thank you all enough. If you'd like to find out more about what being a channel member entails, along with the benefits such as early video access, feel free to click the join button down below for more info. Anyway, on to the reveal. And here it is, the WS15 engine is fully complete and running on my workbench. Having completed the engine in just over a single afternoon sitting, I'd say it's a great little weekend project for anyone interested in learning more about turbofan propulsion, or simply someone who wants a nice looking display model for their desktop. Either way, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Whilst the previously mentioned print lines are visible in the end, I wouldn't say they detract too badly, and the metallic colour scheme does compensate to a certain extent. The fact that each stage of propulsion is coloured with a different metallic shade is a nice extra and helps from an educational point of view. There were, of course, some hiccups that I'd like to address in order to give both points of view for this model. As mentioned previously in the video, some of the components were pretty tricky to assemble, with some physical modifications even required in the low pressure compressor module. These could have been down to user error, however, so I'm not ruling out this possibility. Just be aware of these aspects if you do come to build the kit yourself. One final thing that I'd just like to mention is the noise of the engine when it's running. It's not exactly quiet. It sounds almost like the motor is struggling to provide the torque required, so swapping it out for a better motor may be advisable. It's a bit of a downer given the amount you're paying for it though. Despite these points that I have brought up, I don't think it's a bad model by any means, quite the opposite. As far as I'm concerned, it looks nice, demonstrates the theory behind turbofans, and was pretty fun to build, so it's generally a thumbs up from me. If you'd like to purchase the kit for yourself, Engine DIY have provided me with a link in the description which will apply a discount to your purchase. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a thumbs up to help with the algorithm, and make sure to leave a comment with your opinions on the engine in the comment section below, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks once again to all the MW channel members, along with all of you guys that have stuck around this far. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Bye!